Hi class, uh, today we're going to be uh, discussing uh, class 2 amalgam restorations, uh, 2.3 lecture. Okay, let's begin. Okay. Um, let's start here at the beginning. All right, class 2 amalgam restorations. Here's some examples of some fancy and shiny restorations. Uh, this one almost looks like a, like a gold restoration uh, uh, with uh, the instrument uh, discoid cleoid. Uh, what you wanna look for in an ideal restoration, uh, you wanna make sure you've got the primary anatomy in place using that uh, football for, uh, burnisher here. Uh, you want to make sure that the uh, cable surface margin is not over or under uh, carved with that discoid cleoid. Uh, be extra careful with that discoid cleoid because that is, you can easily get carried away carving away here at the cable surface margin, uh, creating an over carving. Okay. Uh, and here with the uh, proximal contacts using a, a Hollenbach to create that and condensing really well. Uh, some of the different uh, amalgam uh, capsule choices. Um, uh, going with a, an Admix one that doesn't set that quick is fine. It's better than uh, this other one that's fast setting because that starts condensing. Uh, it starts to set too quick. Then when you try to condense, it'll harden and uh, that's it. You run out of time. And then uh, if you're not done, uh, you may have some voids or the uh, amalgam can fracture too if it's not condensed properly in time. Here's some other examples of some uh, real massive uh, amalgams here. For something like this, I, I'd go with a crown instead of an amalgam. Uh, the rest of your armamentarium here, you got the Toffelmeyer uh, retainer, matrix band and wedges. I personally like to use the thinnest gauge band possible. Here you got the different uh, types of uh, retainers. When using this retainer, especially in the posterior area, what you gotta be careful with is when you start rotating the spindle, that it doesn't pinch the patient uh, in, their, in their lip or cheek. That you gotta really watch out for. You gotta retract their lip when you're spinning that together to tighten uh, the, uh, the band in this Toffelmeyer. So always look out for that. Uh, and here's showing you the placement of it. It's gonna make more sense once you see the video uh, here. But you wanna make sure that the narrow part of that band is towards the gingiva. Your example of a placement of it and the uh, placement of the wedge. You wanna make sure that once you have the uh, band secured to the Toffelmeyer and also around that tooth and the wedge, uh, you wanna burnish the contact here. You wanna burnish uh, uh, in here. Uh, I, I like to use the discoid cleoid, or you can use the burnisher. Some people even like to use the uh, uh, the Explorer. Uh, that way you have nice intimate contact against the adjacent tooth wall, okay? And here uh, you're gonna use a, a wedge depending on the, the size you can get in there. Uh, the purpose of that is to um, separate the teeth to get good tight contacts and also create a seal between the band and the, uh, and the box, the gingival box. You want to make sure that that band is about a millimeter above the occlusal height and also slightly below the gingival box. That way you don't have any gap in there or any overhang from the amalgam. Different gauges. Again, I like to use uh, something more of a uh, dead soft, the thinnest possible. Makes it easier to uh, 
burnish ag against the, uh, the contacts. Different size bands. If the caries is very deep, uh, uh, almost subgingival, you want to go with a, a larger um, band such as this. It has kind of like the little aprons in it. Uh, and if it's not that deep, you can just uh, modify it. Using the different instruments in this sequence. You're showing a picture of uh, placement of the amalgam and then condensing it. And then once you have everything condensed, then you start using the burnisher and start burnishing back and forth, removing all the excess amalgam because you're uh, removing the excess and you're trying to um, get the occlusion to as much as possible before this uh, hardens. And then using the Explorer to remove the extra flash. And then uh, after you've done that, you can remove the Telfelmeyer and band and use that Holland back to uh, go ahead and, and remove the extra flash that's in proximal. The Holland back is a really good uh, hand instrument. And then contouring here with the uh, a cleoid uh, discoid. Again, you got to be careful here because you can easily over carve here at the cable surface margins. Try to use that burnisher, the football one, as much as possible. And then the final uh, result here. And that is all. All right, thank you. Take care.